Greetings everyone, uh, it's T2 again. Today I'm going to do a book review of You by Austin Grossman. Um, this is a book that's about video game developers in the 90s. Uh, it's actually pretty good. Uh, kind of reminds me of Blizzard or Bethesda. Or like the studio that the developers have in the book is called Black Arts. Which might be named after Black Isle. So, there's these four or five groups, the four or five kids in high school that started this company. Uh, the main two are Simon and Darren. And Darren's like the charismatic Todd Howard type, and Simon's more like the uh, David Brevik kind of genius that creates the game engine. And then he dies, and then the company keeps going, and they like. They actually made several games. They made like a fantasy game called Realms of Gold. <clears throat> and then they made like this spy film noir type World War One kind of a game. And like there's in the Realms of Gold fantasy game, there's these four main characters. Like a thief, a warrior, um, an archer, a priest, a princess, and a wizard. And they're in like Prindar, Lorak, Lyra, and... Um, Bran, Bran, something like that. Anyway, so when they make like the uh, the World War One kind of game, they keep the similar names or something. Or like, there's a bad guy that's like they'll name him Oh Caroli. Like Lorak is Carol backwards. It was named after this guy's girlfriend in high school or something. So they keep like changing the name slightly. Then they ended up making like a space game. Uh, I forget what it was called. Clandestine was the uh, the World War One game, but then they had a space game and they named them like robot sounding names, but similar like Prindar instead of yeah that's what the other one was, that was the thief, right? I'm gonna say that already. I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, the main point is that the main character of the book, uh, there's this girl Lisa. She was the third one, and then the fourth guy, he kind of quit after high school and didn't pursue video games, and he kind of did other stuff. And then he gets to where he's needing a job, and he goes back to them after, like the the Darren guy is kind of like quitting to form his own company because he's like really popular and stuff, and kind of abandoning Lisa and the rest of the dudes that have this company now. So this guy is kind of coming back and just wanting a job, and he doesn't really know anything about game development. He seems like a noob. Most of the book you're like expecting him to be designing this game because he they make him like the lead character creative designer or something and like he doesn't really des design anything like he's still like learning how to code and he's like playing the old games most of the time like trying to figure out what the hell is happening in the old games to figure out how to design the new games because there's like this uh, crown that they got to get that's going to be in the new game and like here's the interesting part is there's this weird glitch in the game based on the sword and uh, it came apparent in this tournament they had like when they made realms of gold they made it really like procedural and like you would control armies and the four main characters you didn't really control them they were kind of like neutral wandering the battlefield and depending on your actions you could kind of gain their favor and they would join you if they wanted to so there was like certain things you could do like really interesting tricks like the the simon guy he felt like he was going to lose. He was really pissed off because Darren beat him in the previous game. And he sends all of his dudes off. And everybody thinks he's just like giving up and he's just quitting. But he really went off in search of this tomb of Aldrich. Which he knew about. That nobody else really, didn't really know about. And he ended up finding this sword called Mornblade. And Mornblade is like this sword that... It makes you lose health points as long as you have it. But you're pretty much invulnerable and you kill everybody in one hit. So as long as you keep killing dudes, you keep making up for the health that you're losing and you can just keep killing and killing and killing as long as you've got bodies in front of you and then you die and then somebody else picks it up and then they're cursed with it but it's like one of the most powerful weapons of the game he ends up beating this guy with it so then later on they're trying to make this new game uh, the new realms of gold they keep having like all these cities they'll just get wiped out because some random character will end up getting a hold of this sword somehow, this Mornblade sword, and they'll go crazy and they'll just wipe out a whole city and they can't figure out how to stop this glitch. Because like once it's over, if you don't pick up the sword in time, it kind of disappears. And then he ends up getting like a tracker from 
the other, the clandestine game, the World War One game, and he puts it on the sword, and he figures out it's like so many light years up in space somewhere. So that he's like having a, it's, that's all like the same game engine, so he can like load his old save data from Realms of Gold and put it in the clandestine, and he can like, in clandestine, the Mornblade actually is a sniper rifle instead of a sword. And in the space game, I can't remember what it was, but uh, maybe it was like a laser rifle or something. Or a lightsaber or something shit. But they have to like figure out how to get so far into space in the space part of the game because it's, it would take you years and years to even reach that high. So they have to like kind of glitch it somehow and they make the mass of their ship like almost zero. So when you hit it, they do the math and it goes faster than light or almost the speed of light. It's pretty crazy shit. Uh, so it's pretty good. But then, uh, I can't remember how it ended. It's been a while since I read this. I've been reading um, this other book. But I wanted to read you this because this is pretty interesting. Um, it really reminds you like today, like with the current climate, how game developers don't know what they're doing. It's like the Bethesda especially because they're making games with that creation engine and they don't seem to understand how it works. Like they release Fallout 76 with all these glitches and they can't fix them because they don't know how. So... Let's see, so this is like, they're talking about the procedural Realms of Gold game and how like there's different tiles and they're all like different like fields or trees or rocks or deserts or whatever and they kind of change on their own and like cities can just spring up on their own because it all happens that way. And uh, this is like at the end of the book and he's like looking at this new game he's made. And he says, this was Simon's vision brought to life as truly as I could make it. Display technology didn't matter. Who cared how many polygons the trees had? I could feel this world breathing. I drew the camera back, kicked the time scale up, and watched days and then years pass. Smoke ascended from a solitary woodcutter's camp in the ocean of pine. Every few turns, there was a low percentage chance the forest would spread out and become fields or die and become desert or a tribal people would settle there and form a village. Um, so about the clouds gathering around, shadowing castles and armies on the march, piling up against the mountain ranges that rib the continents, rivers trickling down from the mountains' heads. There was no geologic time per se, but we registered a few types of terrain altering events, the rare earthquake or volcano, the once in an era feat of earth shaking high magic or divine retribution. Simple probability pyramids govern the world's production. Fields generated crops in appropriate proportions, more staples and fewer luxury goods. Regional imbalances generated trade automatically. Forests generated X amount of game animals and X over 10 predators. So there's like a tenth as many predators as there are animals. And then rarer exotic or magical fauna, populations swelling and shrinking by Malthusian logic. The seas generated fish and whales, and in the depths the Leviathan and Kraken and the odd stranger things, ancient things that belonged on other planes but found their way into the deep ocean. Sounds dope. When a dragon or apex predator appeared, it automatically aggregated treasure and laid waste to the surrounding countryside. In our toy economy, all the world's wealth started at the top of the supply chain as gold and wood and leather and food. Dwarves and humans dug for minerals in the deep folds of the irregular crust and so jewels and metals and rarer things propagated along caravan routes and clogged in the cities then radiated outward as crafted goods. X number of ingots became a dagger or a sword. So many hides became a cloak or a suit of leather armor and so forth for all the myriad daggers and bridles and lanterns and helmets and vestments and statuettes and bowstrings and scroll cases that equip and ornament the world. That's good writing. And it's pretty cool for a game. Uh, let's see. The economy worked, but we were long past understanding why because every employee had ever touched the system, which was almost every designer or programmer in the building had added their own little algorithmic tweak to it, and by now the price setting algorithm had 50 different half remembered undergraduate versions of Keynes or Weber or Adams feeding into it. Add to this the nonlinear fluctuations born from player behavior, tweaks to the magic system, revalued every magical herb and powder, and every infusion of treasure, every adventuring party hauled up from the depths to upset the markets like a diver cannonballing into a neighborhood pool. Yeah, so it was pretty dope. Um, 
Yeah, so I'd really like to play a game like that. I can't like imagine my ultimate game idea being something like that. A little procedurally, like the trees growing and stuff. And, like constantly giving you like random things you gotta do. Quests that just come up out of the world randomly generating things and having low percentage chances to change things and I don't know. Sounds dope. Anyway. If you hear this music in the background, it's because there's a church next to my house now. And it is owned by my new boss, so I can't really complain. So, it's kind of a weird situation. <laughs> anyway, I highly recommend this book. I'm currently reading The Outsider by Stephen King, because I'm watching the TV show and I'm trying to keep ahead of it. But uh, I'm going to go watch episode 5 right now, it just came out. So I'll see you guys later.